Hi, my name is Allison and I am the founder of Honey Badger Radio, which Badger Live Streams is an offshoot of. I wanted to give you all a response to a rather scathing, piquant comment that we received on a previous video that we did a while ago called The Authentic Observer, or on a YouTuber called The Authentic Observer. And uh, what I wanted to talk about in this series, it's going to end up being a series, is sort of the philosophy behind Honey Badger Radio, what I hope to accomplish, the approach that we're using, and what we've done, you know, in the last 10 years as a group. And I figured that this might be of interest to the old timers and maybe some of the new timers to find out what we're about and what we what what this is about. And uh, yeah. And before we get into it, I do want to tell you, if you enjoy this content and you want to support it, you can do so at feedthebadger.com slash support. If you want to see more of it, you can do so at feedthebadger.com slash subscribe. And if you just want to send me a comment that you want me to respond to in the next installment of this series of responding to <laughs> a scathing comment that I got, then send uh, those messages to feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. And you can enter a message in there and you can give us a tip, and I will respond to it on the next installment of this. So without further ado, here is, here is the comment. Magnus Carlson 8655 writes, It's honestly embarrassing that a men's rights activist newcomer channel like Manosphere Highlights Daily has several times the subscriber number compared to Honey Badger Radio who has been in this space for over 10 years and is even more embarrassing that they try to rationalize this failure of reaching a wider audience by claiming that they're too intellectual and cerebral for the average viewer. No, it's not because you're too intellectual. It's because the format is extremely off-putting to the average viewer. This is the reason why Badger Livestreams has 10K and their regular channel has 49 instead of 500,000, which they could easily have reached after 10 years of being the self-proclaimed thought leaders in this space. Which, don't get me wrong, I definitely think they are. So in conclusion, they only have themselves to blame for not being more influential and not reaching a wider audience. So that was Magnus Carlson on why Honey Badger Radio and Badger Livestreams don't have the viewership we should have if we were better channels. Oof. Okay. Well, this really hit home when I first read the comment. I must admit that it was quite demoralizing. And I did suggest that if we aren't providing anything of value, maybe the solution is to move on and cede the floor to someone else. Since then, I've thought about that and why it is we don't have as large an audience as other creators. I would argue that a Manosphere channel, by definition, is going to have a larger audience than a men's rights channel because it doesn't, the Manosphere doesn't really challenge a lot of some of the fundamental things that we challenge. It still frames the whole issue in terms of men's agency. It still frames it as in, if you do this, you will get women. You will get women's attention because that's where the Manosphere's focus is, is to get men in relationships with women, which is fine. I'm not saying that that's bad, but we have a different focus, namely to make sure those relationships don't turn utterly toxic and to challenge the overweening level of powers that women have in relationships. But that's a little bit more of a difficult topic. So. What I wanted to get into in responding to Magnus Carlson, and um, I do have, I have written out a, a series of headings. Let me try to frame this so you can read it. There you go. These are my headings of the various installments of my response, which is going to be probably fairly long. But the first thing I wanted to respond to was what we're trying to do fundamentally and a contradiction that I see in what Magnus Carlson is saying. Now he says in his opinion that we are the thought leaders in this area. And I know that I've said that I've tried to always bring something new, to always be looking at the issue in a new way, 
to try to dig deep and find additional factors or to bring additional factors in to try to explain the things that I'm seeing. So this is something that I've always attempted to do. And I'd like to point out that when you are dealing with bringing up new concepts thing, and framing things in ways that they haven't been or bringing together concepts that haven't been brought together or trying to look at fundamental forces and explain them, when you're in that space, it's really hard to package it. And in our defense, it's hard to simultaneously be generating ideas and making them as palatable as possible. So you can be either at the stage of generating the idea or you can see it at the stage where it's beautifully packaged and it's presented in a way that's very consumable. And what we've focused on is to get into the stage where we're digging it up and we're going to be covered in dirt and it's not going to be pretty and it's going to be maybe confusing and it's maybe parts of it are going to be boring because this is more of an excavation than it is a museum. If you understand, we're excavating these ideas. We are not presenting them for consumption by the public. Now I would say that your, the statement that we are not influential is, I, I, I don't know if I would go that far. I think that we do have an influence on other creators who definitely pay attention to what we're doing and our concepts sort of filter down into what they're saying. So I, I think that you're, we might be looking at this wrong. Yes, we don't have the same kind of viewership because again, you're watching an excavation. This is, this is what interests me. And I'm going to be, okay, let me, let me just cut the crap. I'm not interested in packaging ideas. That sounds boring as, it sounds boring, right? Packaging, excavation is where I'm at. Trying to dig deep and find the most interesting artifacts to present. And to do that, you need to be in the dirt. Okay. And that's where I'm at home talking to Brian, talking to Karen, bouncing ideas off of each other, forcing each other to actually look at what our conclusions are and what the basis of those things are. And if we can extend them even further, like jostling back and forth, that's what interests me. I don't want to be spoon fed. And I would hope that the people who are interested in our channel also don't want to be spoon fed. They're more interested in the process of developing an idea, of pushing up against each other, of struggling to bring this concept out of the dirt and present it, you know, in a mess. As a, it's covered in mud. It's covered in debris. It's maybe a bit broken here and there. You know, you don't know what part goes where, but it's the process of discovery that's really fascinating to me, you know? And uh, if I could, I would take you in my my private rant capades where I'm just in my house ranting to myself about these ideas, but I don't think you wanna see that. That would probably be even more horrifying. But that's the point. Badger live streams is about excavation. It's not about, okay, well here, let us, let's put this on a nice little podium that the lighting's good. Oh, we have a nice little plaque to explain what it is. All of the pieces are in a relative position. Ah, we're about getting into the dirt and pulling it out. And that means that it's just not going to be pretty. It's, it's just not a pretty process. Now, I could potentially do that, but I'm going to warn you, that is not my expertise. I'll, I'll be really completely honest. Sorry, I just got a call from somewhere. Not my expertise. Like, I am not a, I am not a producer. I have no background in production. <laughs> Probably have noticed that. A little bit of background in film, but other than that, mostly no, no background at all in production. So I'm not a producer. I am not a marketer. I, I apologize. I just, marketing confuses the hell out of me. I am not a promoter. At best, I know a bit of sales, but all of that other stuff, I am not an expert in it. I don't have expertise in it. I, tr you know, like learning it, I could spend time learning it. But on the other hand, 
There are so many people on YouTube that offer that. Like you can go there and get it. You want the the nice little thing on its plinth with its little label and it looks beautiful and it's beautiful. You can go there, but you realize that that, re that represents multiple layers of refinement, which itself means that you are losing resolution of the concept. And the other thing is that you are you are no longer part of the process. Like I invite you to to comment and to be part of the process and to to bring your perspective. You're no longer part of the process when it's so clean. You're not part of the excavation. You're not part of the dig if you're in a museum. So there's that as well. You lose that. If we if we did that, you lose that. You lose that level of integration between the audience who's just who's right there watching you ex ex excavate something. So it doesn't feel as as pat, as complete, as finalized as something in a museum. You're looking at this thing, you're contending with it on a level that is immediate, right? That's what I want. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to present. That's where my interest lies. And I'll get a little bit more into that, into who I am, which I don't usually talk about, like my background. But I just want to point that out. It's like, if you want things to be at the cutting edge, then you're looking at a dirty excavation site, not a clean museum. So there's that. And there's not a lot of dirty excavation sites on YouTube, let's face it, especially not now. Everything is just prepackaged, like it's popped out of a shrink-wrapped container. Everything now. And there's plenty of it. You know, if that's what you want, I don't begrudge you. But like I said, I want a constant stream of challenge, of something new to contend with. That's what I like. And if you like that too, then this is the channel for you because we are always digging out something new. Admittedly, Karen's anecdotes can become repetitive. You know, um, I felt that myself. However, she always has a little stinger at the end, usually something new. So there you go, just just stick with it. She has a point to describing how, you know, it was, this, it was the style of the time to have an onion on your belt. She usually has a point to it, so just stick with it. And I know that I can be very esoteric, which can be also quite difficult to stick with. And luckily we have Brian, who is busily catching all of the stuff and trying to make it as comprehensible as possible to people who aren't, you know, <laughs> neck deep in an excavation, feeling through things that you can't even explain, much less package, right? And, and that's the thing, like when you're at this level, and I don't mean to be blowing smoke up my own ass, but when you're at this level, it's like you're groping. It's, it's almost impossible to explain what you're seeing, what you're doing, much less uh, package it neatly. So there you go. That That's something I would put out there. Fundamentally, we're not that. We're just not. Okay, let me stop for a moment because I have to do some business. All right, so I would like to ask a question if you're listening to me now and you enjoy our content and you also have the means to support why it is that you, and you're not currently supporting, why you don't currently support and the, what I'm trying to get at that is think about the thing that's stopping you, that if it was addressed, you would support us. And if you would send the answer to that question of why you don't support, if you are able to support, because if you aren't able, then, you know, that that's perfectly understandable. Why you don't support to feed badger at feedthebadger.com. I just was about to do the URL with not the, the email address, which would work. So send the, send the answer to the question of why you don't support to badger at feedthebadger.com. And uh, if the answer to why you don't support is why not, then stay tuned to the end or look in the low bar for some options to help us out, which would be really helpful right now as we are dealing with some financial stuff that I will explain at the end. Okay, so that done.
Oh, oh, I guess I should say. And if you do want to support, feedthebadger.com slash support for our monthly fundraiser and feedthebadger.com slash subscribe to subscribe. And again, that'll be in the low bar. I can just hear Brian saying, do the things, Allison, do them. So I have done the things. Let's move on. All right. So yes, we're messy. We're an excavation site. We're not a museum. Yeah. There are plenty of museums. There are plenty of places where you get to see lots of dead bots that have no life left because they're almost completely just packaging. No offense, but that's the way it looks like to me. So yeah, you say that like Magnus Carlson says we're the thought leaders. Well, thought leaders are at excavations. They're not in museums. So I have to sacrifice one for the other. And personally, I'm more interested in being at the edge of the excavation than being at the end product, which is a plinth on the museum. So, you know, that that's sort of that thing. And just to give you a more of an idea of my background, whew, okay. Well, first of all, I just wanna point out that Karen is a writer. Brian is an illustrator and a storyteller. And my preference is, you know, I'm a writer, as many of you know, and I also am sort of a middling illustrator. So there you go. We're basically all artists, which I think is great because artists occupy that frontier of human expression and understanding of what it is to be human. And I think that's where the solution to whatever's happening is going to be. It's going to be out there. It's going to be in the excavation site. It's going to be in the frontier. You know, it's going to be up to your neck in mud, right? Digging through concepts that you cannot describe, you can only feel. I think that's where it's going to be. And so I think artists are perfect for that. But artists are not, like, we're not... Like again, we're not producers, we're not we're not marketers, we're not publicists, we're not into production, we're not journalists. We're absolutely amateurs when it comes to this. 100% amateur. So Magnus Car you're right. We are amateurs. This is amateur hour. We're just flopping around in the mud trying to bring you whatever new thing that we can find as artists and thinkers. And just let me give you a little bit more about my specific background, like my educational background. I have a degree in fine art, uh, a bachelor's degree in fine art, and a master's in environmental design. And a lot of people don't know what the hell environmental design is, so let me try to explain it. When you are dealing with an environmental design problem, you are dealing with multiple systems intersecting. So you're dealing with a political system. You're dealing with informal social systems that have risen up. You're dealing with all kinds of um, community organizations, uh, maybe neighborhood organizations, um, hobby organizations or sport organizations. You're dealing with um, architectural systems. You are dealing with infrastructure systems, funding systems, ecological systems. So you are dealing with a system of systems. So the mindset that you have to bring is a mindset of dealing with wicked problems because you have this piece here, which is like system A, which has multiple inputs, multiple outputs, and it's gonna interact with system B in multiple ways with multiple new inputs and outputs, which is gonna interact with system D, and A, B, and C, and D are all gonna interact with F, and it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult way, it's a difficult thing to sort of tease out how you intervene in the system to affect a particular outcome that you want, essentially. And that is the training that I've had with wicked problems, with systems of systems. So where do you where do you hit the hammer to get the engine to work? You know, and even more complicated than that. But to to pull those down into how do you intervene with this complex mass of interconnected parts, of moving parts which cause other moving parts to other moving parts. How do you intervene to affect a particular outcome? That is where that is my I, I don't even, I hate the word expertise, but it is my background is 
figuring out systems of systems and where you intervene to affect whatever outcome you want. And based on my expertise, yes, I'll use the word, I hate it, but I'll use it. What I see with this particular system of systems is that what is tripping us up, what is destroying us, is this whole notion that men are defined by oppressing women. Like this is what's going to destroy our society. This is the untruth that's going to destroy our society. And all of the other things that people talk about are downstream of that. Because once you set up men oppress women, what ends up happening? Inevitably, you start destroying the relationship between men and women because you are defining men by being villains and women by being victims. So you're saying the predominant way that men and women interact is through oppression. Why would anyone want to get into a relationship with their oppressor? Okay, And the women who are susceptible to these kinds of messages will be the first to exit. And then it will just accelerate. And then we are dealing with a situation where most women don't have masculinity in their life at all. And they are the biggest voting block in our society. So now they're having a huge influence on politics. So then we have the downstream of all of that is a, politi a political landscape that is shaped by not just women's instincts, not just women's nature, but the nature of women completely without any relationship to the masculine, who are expressing their instincts in some of the most disruptive ways, who are, who are looking for infants to take care of in terms of political groups or ideological groups, who are looking for sources of piety in terms of groups that they can take a knee for. Okay, and this becomes the overwhelming influence on our politics, which alienates men more and more from the process of providing and protecting the society that they're part of, right? And downstream of all of this is systems collapse, right? This is, this is my prognostication. This is my uh, analysis. This is my, um, oh, what is it called? When a doctor gives you, it, it is my diagnosis. This is my diagnosis, right? So that's my expertise. This is my diagnosis. This is what is killing us. However, it's also what saved us. And when you understand that what's killing us now is also what saved us, then you can start developing a solution that gets us out of this mess, this wicked problem. Because, you know, the problem is always the solution. <laughs> All right. So I, I just thought I would give you like a brief overview of what I wanted to focus on with Honey Badger Radio. Like this is just the beginning. Like this is just the format. This is just dealing with the format. This is why it's messy. Right. It's because we're excavators. We're not curators. Right. It's always going to be messy. And if it's that means that we lose viewership, so be it. Because somebody's got to be excavating. Somebody's got to be... This is this is another thing that I know about problems. Somebody has always got to be looking at the new frontiers, bringing in new information, butting up against each other, arguing with each other, bouncing off of each other, and bringing new things to the table. Somebody's got to be doing that, or problems don't get solved, especially at this, this stage of the problem. So, again... Just tying back to that little digression that I had about my question. So if you did, you did ask yourself, why don't I support? And the answer was, why not? Well, again, you can help us out monthly at feedthebadger.com with our monthly fundraiser at feedthebadger.com slash support. And you can help us out by setting up a subscription, which is really helpful, like really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it at feedthebadger.com slash subscribe. Very much appreciate it if you would do that. We are dealing with a, a hole in our financing because several of our sort of large patrons last year had to stop, not 
m not because they didn't like our content or anything like that, just because of personal situations, moving jobs or, you know, credit card debt, that kind of thing. So we have a bit of a hole and I was really hoping that that I would be able to increase what I'm able to give Brian, but unfortunately there's this hole, so I gotta fill that first. So if you would like to help us out and make sure that we can continue to do this content, again, feedthebadger.com slash subscribe to, to set up a monthly support, feedthebadger.com slash support if you just wanna do a one-time option. And why, why should you do it? Well, because I think we are unique. Like, a lot of people will take the viewership and the advertising revenue over trying to bring new ideas to the table. Because again, it's an excavation. It's not going to be pretty. A museum is where things are presented in a pretty way. But at that point in time, it's dead. Like the, the idea is so packaged that it's dead. It's not moving. It's not, it's not becoming something... It's not being pushed up against. It's not being worked on. It's already decided. Every aspect of it is already decided. What it means, where it lies in the, the greater scope of things. You know, the cultural, the cultural milieu it came from, its date, it, it's, its overall historic meaning. Everything's been decided. That's not what we're about. We're about pulling out what hasn't been decided, what hasn't been figured out which, you know, honestly amounts to why we did this, <laughs> why we embrace such a, such a destructive narrative and why it actually makes sense at the end of the day. So anyway, if that's something that invigorates you, the very concept, like getting at the edge of things and trying to find stuff that's completely new or stuff that's almost, you can't even articulate it. You can just feel it. You can just feel the edges of it and bring it out and and, and be like, oh, this is this thing. All I can do is witter about it for, for, for like five minutes from every angle. I can't even articulate to you what it is because we haven't even identified it yet. If that's something that inspires you, then please help us out. Help make sure that we can continue to do this work. And again, thank you to everybody who does help out because you are the reason why we are able to continue this. Despite the fact that it's not something that a lot of people really understand or want to watch. You guys do. Like you, our supporters do. Our audience does. And again, please help. Make sure that we can continue to do it because it's really up to you weirdos at the edge <laughs> and us weirdos at the edge to just bring these concepts into fruition. And believe me, the issues that we're facing right now are not going to be solved by the politics that got us here. You think about that. All of the pat politics, all of the ideologies that got us here, that were that <laughs> that are prominent or popular are not going to get us out of the problem because they're the one that got us into it. All right? So this is where in my opinion as <laughs> As an environmental designer, this is where it's at. This is where we need to push. This is where we need to apply our energy and our focus. And it doesn't matter how many there are of us. Because the alternative is that there's none of us doing this work. I mean, and that is up to you. That's genuinely up to you. You listening to me now. Do you want to make sure that this work is done? Is it valuable to you? Then make sure it continues. Again, feedthebadger.com slash support for the monthly option and feedthebadger.com slash subscribe for ongoing support. And thank you all again for your kind attention and for your kind support. And thank you, Magnus Carlson, because you gave me a lot to think about, specifically how to explain what we do here at Honey Badger Radio. See ya. What are you doing? What? Are you shilling? No, this is the other... Uh, don't listen to this vituperative virago. Go find a woman who'll, who'll blame you and give her your spittly dosh. Real men uh, only pay for false hopes and a punch in the nose. Uh. Men's right activists are machines. 
dude, okay? They are literal machines. They are talking point machines. They are impossible to fucking deal with, especially if you have like, especially if you have like a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that too. Holy shit, you're fucked.